Dear friends, welcome and it is good that you are able to join us today. This Sunday is the fifth Sunday in the Easter season and it is yet another opportunity when we hear and reflect on the scripture readings chosen for today. I hope you'll find something of God in the hymns, prayers and the teachings of Jesus, especially from the gospel story. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in His way, to rejoice in His truth, and to share His risen life, who is alive and reigns with, thee, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 14 verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. 
if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
The gospel of today begins with the words, Do not let your hearts be troubled. What troubles your heart today? For me, I can think about a litany of problems, some personal and others not personal. I can think about those grieving and mourning death of loved ones. I can think of families that are struggling, children that are hungry, and people that are hanging on by a thread. I think about my own losses and disappointments. So despite what Jesus says about not letting our hearts be troubled, my heart sometimes is troubled, and I suspect yours too because you'll most likely have your list of things that trouble you. None of us get through this life without a troubled heart. I don't think we can look at the pain of the world today, or the suffering of a loved one, or even our own wounds, and not have a troubled heart. That is the context in which we hear these words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And it's not that different from the context in which he said them. It was the night of the Last Supper when he was encouraging his disciples following his announcement that he was going to depart from this world by dying on the cross. Now one may wonder how Jesus could say such a thing when he himself was troubled a couple of times, one, at seeing Mary and the Jews weeping at the death of Lazarus, and two, at the Garden of Gethsemane just before his crucifixion. So what is Jesus actually telling us here? How do we begin to make sense of this particular teaching of Jesus in a world which is constantly troubled. I would like to invite you to think of times when your heart has been troubled. It's not hard to understand why this particular text is so often used in funeral services. Because death troubles our hearts and we want to find some form of balance, stability and harmony so think about times when your heart has been troubled. Maybe it is now, given our current times and circumstances. What does that feel like? We all experience it in our own ways. But does the following sound familiar? Do you feel isolated, overwhelmed or powerless? Do you feel off balance, out of control, disconnected or afraid? Do you experience despair, grief, panic or anger? Usually, in the midst of all these feelings, the underlying unspoken question is this. Will the center hold? Or is everything collapsing around us? Now, in the Gospel reading, among the disciples Jesus is speaking to, Thomas and Philip are feeling quite off balance and afraid. And this is what happens when we are troubled. We are off balance. We have lost our center and are out of harmony and disconnected. So Thomas speaks out and asks Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I think Thomas speaks for us all here. What he is saying here, in other words, is we have lost our center. How do we recenter? Where do we go when everything seems to be collapsing around us? 
But here is the paradox. Sometimes we have to lose our center in order to find it. Now, I'm not suggesting that God purposely throws bad things to us to lose our center in order to find it. Troubles or bad things just happens. It is a part of life. It is part of human condition. Sometimes trouble comes out of circumstances we didn't create or choose. Other times, it is a consequence of our choices or actions. But regardless, Jesus is saying that that is not a place to stay or where to live. It is not the life he offers us. So if your heart is troubled, then it's time to recenter. However, recentering doesn't mean our hearts won't be troubled. It doesn't necessarily fix the problem, whatever it might be. Recentering here means that our lives are tethered to something greater than ourselves. It means that our hearts are held secure by the divine life. And Jesus, in this rather complex piece of gospel reading, is reminding us that there is a center. And the center is not the law or the church, and it is not even us. Yet the center is found within us. Philip, the other disciple, says to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Philip here seems to have bought into the idea that the Father is apart from and outside of himself. The Father is somewhere out there. However, Jesus tells him, the center is within. The Father's house is within. The kingdom is within. So wherever you go, there is the center. Whatever you face, there is the center. Wherever you are, there is the center. Regardless of what troubles, wherever you are, there is the center. And this is not because you are the center, but because God is within you. So we do not have to find or establish the center. In fact, we can't. We can only awaken to it. We already know the way and the place of this center within us, Jesus says. So in the language of today's gospel, the center is the Father's house. And there are many dwelling places in this house for every troubled heart. Now, I'm not talking about some sort of heavenly dormitory in the afterlife for those who have enough right belief and right behavior. I am talking about the dwelling places as the ways God's life connects our own. Mercy and forgiveness, justice, generosity, compassion, healing, love, beauty, wisdom, hope, courage, joy, intimacy, and so forth. These are the dwelling places for troubled hearts. These are places of recentering. So every time we live and express these divine attributes, in our way of being with our words or by our actions, we regain our center, we restore balance and take up residence or a dwelling in the Father's house, so to speak. So dear friends, what troubles your heart today that needs recentering? Jesus says, in my Father's house, there are 
many dwelling places. Amen. Loving God, may our hearts be open to you, as in Jesus' name we pray. Father, as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War in Europe, we pray for unity and peace. We remember and give thanks for the sacrifices made by so many to bring that conflict to an end and to secure freedom for the generations to come. We also remember those who lost their lives as casualties of the war and those who mourned their loss. We bring to mind the horrors of war and all those who suffered on both sides. We give thanks for the reconciliation between our nations and the accord which endures with the hope of continued peace. Lord, we pray for freedom from fear intolerance and hatred. Father, give us strength and courage to defeat such feelings, to help us forgive those who have trespassed against us as we are forgiven by you, and to find joy in the company of each other. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in these difficult times, help us find peace and comfort in our hearts through Jesus. When we are unsure of which path to take, give us grace so that we can see that Jesus is the way. When we cannot see the answer, inspire us to realise that Jesus is the truth. When we are struggling and don't know if we can persevere, remind us that Jesus is the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your world and for it to be healed as we recover from the effects of the pandemic. We give thanks for our key workers and all they have done in such difficult circumstances to help others, in some cases at their own risk. And in particular, bring to mind the medical staff and care workers who act selflessly as they carry out their roles. We ask for comfort and courage for those who face an uncertain future over the coming months and for those who may continue to be separated from loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your church around the world, for our church family throughout the parish and wider and for Norbert as he leads us in our worship and shepherds us in our faith. We also pray for our friends, family and communities. Lord, at this time, help us see the many ways in which we can do better, be better, and through our actions in his name, do the greater things that Jesus spoke of. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who are unwell and in need of your care. We bring to mind those who are in hospital or at home, in care homes and hospices, those who are awaiting treatment, those who are scared to seek advice or help, and those who are recovering. We think of those who suffer through loneliness, anxiety, depression or distress. Father, hold all those in need close to you and give them strength and hope. And we take a moment to name in our hearts those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those we have lost and who have gone before us, as well as those who they have left behind and whose lives they touched forever. May those who mourn see the light shining in the darkness and know that the light overcomes the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sea is still, a sunrise gleams, and rose gold beams imbue the dreams of sailors sleeping still. Now gulls a flutter haste for shore, neath haloed sun and mackerel sky, through swelling billows spray they fly, past wingless sailors standing by, of thunderous peril sure. But tempest looms, its charcoal plumes forebode men's dooms, they flinch at what they see. The skies erupt with flame and crack, crocodile waves pitch, plunge the mast, most rasp for breath, wrestle disasters, till each deluge seems their last, lost past hope amid the black. Sunset, through squall and stinging eyes, the bosun spies where a crimson carpet lies westward to landfall. So God's beacon calls us all from the depths of our despair, steers us gasping to fresh air. Recall these sailors in your prayer. God will catch you when you fall. Ne'er did merry a man arrive, half drunk, half drowned. They kiss the ground which God's light found, tested, but alive. And now the only hymn that was sung at the coronation, specially arranged for the coronation by Rafe Vaughan Williams,
let us pray for God's blessing. May God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. May God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. May God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen.